Lead or be led, need what can't be met. Life of a lion, live for the hunt, see the top, be stare. Lead or be led, need what can't be met. Guys, welcome to the Sean Whalen Show. Welcome back. Uh, we good? Richie, we're on. We're solid. Um, how, how, does, how does it, f- Senator Walton? <laughs> how does that sound? How does that feel to hear that? It seems, it's it's feels- prestigious. Is it? I hope so. But that, that's one of the problems with that's, that's going on in America is I don't know that at least all the young people that I work with think that any type of a political office is something that's prestigious. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool, though. Yeah, I, I do, too. I'm excited about it. I'm, I think that I think we can do some good, and that's why I'm running. But. Guys, we have uh, my good friend Jason Walton here. Jason and I, we go, we go back a number of years. We've known each other uh, four or five years or it's so. A, it's been and a while. Funny story, we were actually both on... A flight to Hawaii. That's right. You were taking all of your employees, uh-huh. or your like just uh, a bunch of sales leaders. Yeah, sales guys, winners, VIPs, whatever, whatever. And my wife and I were going out for a, a long weekend, and we were sitting yep. next to each other in first class. And you're like, "Hey, man, do you want to come like rile these guys up and talk to them?" And they had no idea because yeah. normally you do these events, and it's like, "Here's our featured speaker and yep. the whole thing." And so I showed up, and I had my Hawaiian shirt and my flip flops on, and you had a bunch of freaking rabble rousing teenagers and young yep. young adults that were there crushing the business game and stuff and uh yeah, that, you that was rallied, a fun time you rallied them up i've never we seen like it you we almost gift. burned the whole hotel down it was great it yeah. was a great weekend but we've never had by the way we've never had such positive response from from someone who's come in to try good. to like motivate so that's i appreciate that's you that's our that. role i mean i'm the best in the game you know what i mean so i'm, I'm really not surprised by that but yeah i'm glad i could help thank you anyways uh guys we're i'm excited to, to have this conversation um today for a couple different reasons um Anybody that's followed me for any period of time knows that I, I ran uh, a number of years ago when uh, Jason Chaffetz stepped down, yeah, uh, and they had the special election, and and I told you this, and yep, and in, and you guys can Google this and find it all out. But I I got into the game and I decided to run because I wanted to really figure out like what <laughs> it was really like, right? I mean. It, Running for any office is crazy expensive. You're spending a ton of money, yeah. the whole deal. And, and so I was like, I just want to figure, I, I want to know like what it's like. I want to throw my hat in the ring. I legitimately wanted to win. I legitimately had, had you know, good ideas and good cause and sat down with the news and they thought I was a lunatic because I'm like, yeah, flat tax and, they, they, and all this other stuff. But uh, I learned a ton about the process and the system. Um, of local politics, specifically the Senate race, which you're actually running for against uh, Curtis, who is yep. who, who I ran against. U.S. Senate, yeah. And it was really funny because, and you probably won't do this, and I don't encourage you to do this unless you want to. <laughs> if you want to go viral on social media, I'm your guy. All right. I did a, I did a video, in fact, I'll show it to you when, when we're done, um, where I mocked politicians. And what I did is, you've seen all the political uh, videos where like, the politician has the hard hat on and he's like, and I'm for the blue collar Americans. And I, he, he's in a coal mine, but he's never been in a coal mine. And yeah, you yeah. can tell they gave him an outfit and said, all right, stand here and shake some hands. And then he's got like, you know, the, the I'm, I'm here for the people and he's riding his motorcycle down the street. There was a really funny picture of me and John Curtis because I've got a Harley and he's got like a Honda Shadow or something like that. Uh-huh. And I'm like, got my leather vest on and my dual 1911s looking like I actually know what I'm doing. And he's got a braided belt and a tucked in shirt and his penny loafers on his bike. And you could tell they're like, hey John, get on your bike and take a picture. It looks really funny. But anyways, I digress. The moral of the story is the video went totally viral because I was mocking politicians and there was a scene in it where I was getting fitted for a suit. And I'm like, my, my uh, constituency said I had to wear one of these lapel pins because it would resonate with the voters. And as it zooms out, you see like, from the waist down, it's blurred. I'm in like my underwear and I'm yeah. getting fitted for this jacket. It's just really, really funny. So if you want to like mock the game, then I'm your guy, I can help you with that. But- That sounds fun actually. When, when we were in, um, I think it was in Moab, we sat down and it was me and Curtis and, and the other candidates. And he, and I think it was, uh, uh, what's his nuts, the, the libertarian, I forget his name. Anyways, they all kind of leaned over right before and they're like, dude, we saw your video. Because when it was on Fox, it was on ABC, NBC, CNN, it, it totally went viral. They're like, dude, that, that was hilarious. It was really freaking funny. I was like, yeah, I'm mocking you guys as well as mocking myself as well as every other politician. But it's, it's pretty creative. funny. Well, that's because you're a marketing genius. So it's worked for you in business. I try. So it works for you with what you're doing, I'm sure. You should run again. No, not right now. Not okay. right now. I, w- I need to have F you money. 
Uh, and when I do, it's like, <laughs> I, I've already said this, and you, you're a very successful business, and I don't want to talk about that, but the last three presidential campaigns um, have spent on average between 500 to $600 million, the presidential campaign. And that's what's declared. Like, that's what's yeah. on the public f- right. for the peons to freaking the peasants to read, right? So I've had this vision where I'm like, I sell a company for like a billion dollars, billion and a half dollars. Like Ryan Smith goes and buys an NBA team. I'm like, I want to buy the White House. I want to buy 1,600 Pennsylvania. I'd be like, okay, how much is it? Okay, um, here's the check. Who's the best campaign manager in town? Got, you're hired. Here's $500 million. Go. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That'd yeah. be pretty gangster, wouldn't well, it? Donald Trump did it. I, that's exactly. But he yeah, only spent, when he ran against uh, Hillary, he spent like 300 and something million. She spent 520, I want to say. Yeah. Million dollars. There was a big discrepancy there. So it goes to show you the power of the social media and, you know, yeah, being I, a I think people underestimate cowboy. how smart, how smart uh, President Trump was. He, I think he. And still is. Sorry. I think people underestimate how smart he still is. I mean, he's brilliant. And, the, and I think he's always been a step ahead of people. Whether For you like him years. or not, whether you like him or not. To not recognize the brilliance and the genius of what he did is why he keeps beating you. That's why you and I get along, and we agree on this a thousand percent. That man, without question, forget everything, the, 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 the hair, the orange face, whatever. He is without question one of the single greatest promoters and marketers of the 21st century period. I, I, I would think I would hands say he's, he's number down. one. I think hands he's number one. down. Yep. And when he was like, I'm running for president, I was like, you guys, you guys don't understand. And this is something that's really interesting. It, we could go on and on, but all these other politicians like were like calling Fox and CNN. Hey, let's do an interview and do an interview. There was a line a mile long outside of everywhere he went begging to talk to that guy, mm-hmm. begging to talk to him. You're not he, 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 everybody labels him as this dummy and this just buffoon who's wobbling around. And I'm like, that guy is a genius. He's so brilliant. He and he's proven it for 40 years in his career. Well, it's not that far off from what you're doing, right? It's creative and gi- giving you stuff to talk about. Yeah. One of the things I thought was interesting that President Trump did uh, when he's campaigning and when he was with the president, when something controversial would come up, the kind of thing that used to knock other candidates down. Right. Instead, instead, right of, instead of leaning into it, it's sorry, instead of like running from it, he would yeah. either lean into it and then do like three more. Yep. So it'd be like, which one do you want to talk about? Because oh, yeah. now there's four of them. Yeah. Well, here, here, do you remember the bit with uh, uh, when he was, he was um, debating Hillary and the tax code thing came up? And I love Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle is one of the greatest comedians <laughs> of all time. And Dave, Sh- Dave Chappelle, bit. you saw the bit. Oh, yeah. He was on Saturday Night Live and he's like, yeah. listen, let me tell you, I couldn't understand it. And it was when Trump literally was asked about the tax code and Dave Chappelle was laughing at it. He's like, here's a guy who said, I'm using this tax code. And the reason why it's never going to change is because Hillary and all of her friends don't want it to change. So you're damn right. I use it. And he was like, damn, like that dude said that. He said, I'm using it because I'm smart. Exactly. And he's like, holy crap. Like that guy was legit. And and he's like, this is the first time a politician's ever told the truth. That's what I think is phenomenal about politics right now is you can't run from social media anymore you can't hide uh-uh. you can't lie like you you can but you can't because at the end of the day it's always going to come out yeah the network You're, the network propaganda can put out whatever they're totally. going to put out but 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 that's i think we're moving past that aren't we well you see a guy like trump who uses his 40 years of ups and downs wins and losses good and bad i mean was there any person in america that was surprised by the fact that he loved women and loved beautiful women and had been married multiple times and said probably a lot of locker room things that you wouldn't want to hear. Or there was no one surprised by that because we've been hearing the dude talk about it for 40 years. So when the yeah. media would pop it up, he's like, yeah, whatever, I already said that. And there was nobody surprised by that. And I think that's a really interesting thing right now in politics is there's so many politicians trying to fit this narrative and saying, okay, you know, I'm going to fill in the blank, whatever the party says, we're going to lock down the border we're gonna, da, 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 and all this other stuff. And then they try and pretend that there's somebody that they're not. And yeah. when you and I have talked and I went to a meeting the other day, you're like, look, man, I'm pissed. Yep. I'm pissed off. And one of the reasons that I want to run is because I'm pissed off. I like that. Yeah. Because we need that. I believe the country not only needs that, but we need somebody who's not afraid to say like how it really is, but I'll honestly to back that thing up and, and anger. A lot of people run from anger. Anger is a very, very good fuel for certain fires. And there's a lot of need for that. And I think there's a lot of people in this country that are 
really stuck in this place where it's like, I'm pissed off, but I don't know what to do about it. I'm pissed off. I don't know that anybody has my back. I'm pissed off and I really want change, but it doesn't seem to be happening. Talk about that for a second. Cause when you said that the other day, I smiled and I know there's a lot of conservatives in the room and I walk in, I'm kind of sitting on the bed like, Oh, that Whalen guy's here. And when you're like, I'm pissed off. I was like, that's all you need for me. You got my vote. Check. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's just the truth of it. Right. I, I have this recurring dream that I wake up in the back of a, of a suburban. And when, I, when, when the dream starts, I'm in a big city going 70 miles an hour and I'm, there's no one driving. There's no one else in the suburban. Sometimes my, I have a kid next to me and I'm just jumping over the seats, making a decision whether I'm gonna reach for the wheel or whether I'm gonna reach for the brake, depending on if I need to avoid hitting something or stop. And I feel like that's the United States. I, f, I mean, w w what do we reach for, the wheel or the brake? Which is gonna destroy us first, our crippling debt or our national security threats. And I'm, t I'm telling you, when I look at career politicians, you look at the decisions they're making, and we can take any issue. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna say, there is, this, there is an absurdity to the decisions they're making that are putting our families at yeah. risk and destroying our nation and, and, and undermining the cons constitutional conservatism. And so it's, as a business person, you're used to thinking strategically. Okay, well, here's what you do in these situations. And w when you think strategically, you can predict what your competitors are gonna do, and usually it makes rational sense. When I look at what politicians are doing, the only thing that I can make sense of is that they're trying to enrich themselves financially, and they're trying to enrich themselves politically. Right. And that's the only thing. So th the, the political gamesmanship is literally about to destroy our country. And I know I probably sound a little upset now, but I because I am. Well, you're, it's true. I did not want to run for totally office. True. I did not want to run for the United States Senate. Well, because you've got a super successful business. I have and stuff. I have stuff going on. Yeah, right. and I didn't name it after myself because I wanted an anonymity. So putting up billboards that say Walton all over the place, I was trying very hard not to do that my whole career. But what am I going to do? Right. What am I going to do? Three years ago, my my oldest daughter Jessica took her own life. And I say that because it's the it's the most I don't want to spend a lot of time on that other than I I love her still I'm proud of her but it's like a grenade going off in your soul, and that's where like from my business experience I have s battled corruption for 25 years, I I have had low opinions of all politicians I fought big government and and I still do and bureaucratic regulators corrupt bureaucratic re regulators. And I've just tried to put my head down and do my thing. Even in my own industry, I've seen corruption, a lot of it. Mm -hmm. And you try to stand up, and anyone who stands up and tries to do the right thing, it seems like you get kicked in the teeth. Mm -hmm. You're never rewarded for trying to do the right thing. Right. And what this country needs more than ever, and after I'm elected, I intend to say this broadly to America as a whole, we need to get rid of the career politicians. That has got to go first and foremost. We need business people like you and mm -hmm. me who step up who are patriots, who want to do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. If not, I'm really worried about where our country is going to yeah. be in five, six, seven years. We have to do it. We have to do it now. Well, be, be, it, politician, politics was never meant to be a job. No. I mean, if you look at George, you look at the history of the country, like George Washington was when they're like, hey, you should be the president. He's like, no, I'm going home. And he went home. And like they had to literally drag him back to be the very first president of the United States of America. He didn't want to. Right. He didn't want to do it. They were like, okay, this is kind of where the whole idea of civic duty came into play. I and relate the whole thing. to that. And, and I mean, I know a lot of successful people, you included, that are kind of like, hey, you know what, whatever, whatever. But like the fact that you're getting in and doing it, number one, obviously yeah. speaks volumes to that. But number two, you don't need to. You no, don't need to. I mean, no. your business career has been wildly <laughs> successful. You've done, you've got, you know, thousands of employees. I mean, millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. So like, why, why? Why jump in? Like, why run for this knowing the dirt? Yeah. The, 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 it's the old saying, when you wrestle with the pigs, you're going to get dirty. Like, knowing that you're going to jump into the pen with the dirty pigs, why do it? Save America. That's it. If not me, then who? Yeah. If I not me, that. then I who? Love that. And that, that's it. So I get to write my story. I don't have a say in anyone else's story, but I get my story. So I lost a daughter. I have two kids left. And after we lost that, after Jessica passed away, my family sat down and said, what can we do that's the most helpful to our family, to our children, our potential grandchildren, and to the world? We looked at philanthropies, which we got involved in, in, in some, American Foundation of mm -hmm. Suicide Prevention and, and, and others. And I literally, Sean, I'm literally saying, what am I going to do? Wait until America isn't America anymore and we're not far from that in the next five or six years? Yeah. And, then, and then say, oh, I saw it coming. Well, then get, why didn't you get off the couch? 
Yeah. How do I explain that to my future self or to my kids or to my grandchildren? And I think this is a fundamental difference, at least I, I'm not going to say between me and anyone else running. I will just say I think I'm the only no, person. No, talk about that's, it. We, just, we I, need that. We, I just by the way, we need that. I just don't trust anyone that's in politics. I just don't trust it because I think that there's a – and that's why I'm for term limits. Even yeah, myself, if I, would, if I was one term or two terms in the Senate, I think that I don't know how you can swim in that water without being infected and, and having things get confusing. Totally. How, how do you do that? Just out of curiosity, because one of the things when I ran, I said that exact same thing. And I have people have asked me, like, if yeah. you're president, what would be the first thing you would do? It wouldn't be the board, it wouldn't be any, it would be term limits. Like executive order for term limits. I don't know if you can do that, if that's a thing, but I would try it. As the president, I'd be like, look, term limits. You guys are all fired after your, your next term. Done yeah. and done. No one's going to vote on that. No one's going to agree with that. But I, I completely believe that the sing the, the reason that, polit that politics is so corrupt is because you have people that have been in there for 20 30 40 years who they're literally not vying and and, and and lobbying for their constituency but for their job so what would you do to do that yeah so first of all I don't, a, a president cannot do that right Dang so that, that that's Crap. unfortunately that's going to have to be uh, well, something. I'll figure out a way. Yeah, We're problem there, solvers. A way. We solve problems. That's what we do. I'll figure it out. Well, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's Article 1 of the Constitution, and that's what I'm running for, which is the U.S. Senate. So you just make law. Yeah. And you can make law to make that happen. And, and I would love to be a part of uh, uh, term limit laws. I, get, I think that would be phenomenal getting involved. But I, I think since we're just talking about corruption a little bit here, I think you have to ask yourself why, why? Is the person you're vote, you want to vote for and support running for office? Yeah. Don't listen to what they're saying. Why are they actually there? What's their history of what they've done? Right. And why are they actually running? Because if it's a politician that's just skipping to the next political job, then it doesn't matter what they say. Right. Well, how are they going to vote when they get in there? A lot of us in Utah feel like we've already been burned right. thinking we we're electing one thing and we got another. So the U.S. Senate, that's every six years. So whichever one of us you send to the Senate, we're not accountable to you for six right. years. And we've already seen what happens when that happens. People go do whatever they want to do. So if they're going there trying to say, hey, can I get on the next committee? Or, hey, uh, am I going to be bullied by, well, I know Mitch McConnell stepped down, but the leader fund mm -hmm. uh, in the U.S. Oh, Senate yeah. for whatever your party is to, to be bullied. And I can talk about that a little bit, too. Yeah. Um, are, what is it that's going to make you cow down? and bow down and kiss the ring right? and say, so that's why you need people like you and me who are frustrated. We know how to get things done. We have a proven track record of organizing capital and human resources to hit, to achieve a vision and one that makes common sense, one that fits within a budget, one yeah. knowing how to meet a payroll. Yeah. That's what we need to, to, to go fix this country and one that's not going to cow down to anybody except the American people in the constitution. Yeah. And if we don't, if we don't start restoring some just basic common sense, and restoring some of the fractures that have happened to the Constitution by people who have violated it, then then uh, we're in trouble. So the time's now. I, I yeah. just don't think I have five more years to wait or six. I don't six. think the country has that long. It's, it's now. But let's take the border, for example. When I went and did my border visit, the you guy was with... just went and did that. Talk about that, yeah. Yeah, so, so the guy was with Art. We were in Tucson. Uh, the Tucson sector. And I think that the, some of the, 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 on the news, we see some of the Texas sectors that have three to 400 illegal immigrants cross daily in those sectors, I think. Tucson, it's 3,000 per day. And so, you know, Art was driving us around and he would show us kind of the lay of the land. And because of catch and release, uh, can I share two stories with yeah, you? Yeah, sure. All right, so first, I mentioned in my videos that it's, the, it's where the majority of the fentanyl is coming in the area mm -hmm. and drugs. So those, the, the cartel leaders are watching. They know where all the border patrol agents are. And so they organize everyone to cross the border when they want them, where they want them to cross. The border patrol, they want to be found. So the border patrol agents go and take them and then they have to drive them over two hours to Tucson to process them. Well, what do you think happens while all the border patrol agents are gone? And the, the cops, cops are gone. <laughs> That's where the drugs come in. Uh, that's, that's when the fentanyl comes in yeah. and everything comes in. J all you have to do is, is change catch and release. That's it. Right. No more catch and release. Why are our politicians playing games with that? We're playing a little bit of gamesmanship with the bill. Let's put this in the bill. Let's put this in the bill. In the meantime, they're putting us in jeopardy. Right. So uh, um, Art told me the story of recently. I don't think I'm going to name the country. But he said 50 military-age young men came from a country in the Middle East from the same area of that country, grew up together in that country, traveled to, the United, to, to Mexico eventually, 
made the deal with the same cartels, came, came to the border, and Art said as we processed them, we said to two of them, what do you think, we're crazy? Mm -hmm. You two can't come in, you're on the terror watch list. And then turns around to the other 48 and says, where do you want to go? No, all, all the other rest of your 48 buddies who are yeah. from the same place, yeah. you want to go to Mapleton? You want to go to <laughs> Draper? We're, we're going to pay for it, and sometime we'll call you in to, to talk to you sometime between now and 2030. Yeah, we'll send you a letter. We would really love it if you showed up. Between, so before 2030 or 2032. That is insanity. Yeah. So like, that is not common sense. Why is, it, why is this? Is it me, or is it ridiculous to think that it's inappropriate for any politician to go into office broke and come out rich. Mm -hmm. Why did the American people not stand up and vote out every politician, every single one that does that? Why don't they? I why, don't know. Why don't, why don't they? I mean, you, what you're saying is, is there isn't a single parent in America that would say, yeah, I want more criminals in my town. Right. There's not one, right? And I don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat or you, you're waving an American flag or a rainbow flag. Let's call it what it really is. Like, I don't think a, I'm a saying parent, anything that's political. But that is my point. When you think common sense, we don't we don't want that. And then there enters that judgment of, well, who are we to judge? Well, the reality is our government has deemed people enemies of the state. <laughs> right. Yeah. Literally enemies of the state. You're on like a, 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 a warning list that you are a terrorist. I mean, do, do we really need to have a debate around that or a conversation around that? So there's there's two there's two things I want to ask you about that. Number one, number one. Why do you think it is that people are so lethargic and so um, complacent and not as pissed off as you and I are? Number two, when you get to D.C., how do you change that? Well, I'm glad you asked that because that's the, that's the great question. Number one, I call it being demoralized. I think that most people are demoralized like I was. Yeah. I was just putting my head down and handling business with my family and my business and trying my best to fight off the government, corrupt politicians and corrupt bureaucrats. And just saying the whole thing's corrupt. I'm just going to put my head down and tend to me. I think there's a lot of Americans who feel the same way. When I speak up, I think there's a lot of Americans who respond and my message resonates with them because they say me too. Mm -hmm. So I think people feel that way, but it's demoralization. And that demoralization, Sean, when I was a sophomore in, in college, I had a friend who was from Mexico, and I said, why did you elect this criminal into, <laughs> to be the president of our country? And he said, incredulously, he goes, what are you, what are you talking about? They're all criminals. And he, was, he wasn't joking. He was like, <laughs> you're choosing between this one or that one. And, and, and I had this, um, this feeling of pride, that, the, the one, the, that feeling you can't control, yeah. that just shot through me about, I'm so proud that I'm an American. America. Yeah. yeah. We don't have that here. We don't, we don't, have, don't have criminals. <laughs> we have people that are honorable who you can respect. Well, yeah. look at us now. How is it that Hunter Biden and Joe Biden are sitting in the White House right now? Yeah. I mean, remember when we were younger, when Gary Hart had an affair and stepped down because the American people would not allow that. There was a line that was crossed and the American people said, no. Here we have everything, and I'm not going to outline them all, that Hunter and Joe Biden, mainly Joe Biden, have done. He is the president of the United States, and why is that? Right. And people say, well, because the Democrats. I say, hold on a second. Why are the Republicans not marching by the millions and demanding the removal? Because we're demoralized. Because we have become like my friend in college where the expectation isn't there. The expectation of honor, of character, right. of integrity, we don't even expect it. There's not even the hope for it. And especially, as you mentioned, I work with thousands of young kids, um, not at a time, about 1,000 a year. And... Um, and they are demoralized. They, they, what, what have they seen? Go back through the years since President Obama came into office. What has been their experience? Right. And I think that, so one of the things that I hope to accomplish, because you asked the question, is I'm trying to involve the young people now. I'm trying to say all of us who are true patriots need to have the courage to stand up together and say enough is enough. We're taking the country back. And we're going to do it lawfully. And we're going to do it in an orderly way. And we're going to talk about it. And, and, and so I want to shine a bright light when I get to Washington on all these things that are that, of, of anything that any other senators or congressmen are doing, regardless of party, that's corrupt and say, Senator so-and-so, why are you trading stocks on a company that appeared before your committee? Why would you do that? And why I'm going to speak to their constituents. Please unelect this person. This person is a public serpent yeah. instead of a public servant. And so, in fact, why are senators allowed to trade stock at all or congressmen? Why? Oh, I know. 
It's because when you, the American people, do the peasants, when, when the peasants do insider trading, it's illegal. Yeah. But apparently, if I get elected and I join the Senate, then that would be us. Yeah. We could say, well, we get to make the laws, and so we're going to say, when we do it, it's fine. The, so the American people have to do exactly what I'm doing now. The call to action. I'm not calling for any type of. I'm calling for a peaceful revolution, a revolution of ideas and a revelation of expectations and a, revo of, a, a revolution of values. Right. We have to come together and say there is basic principles of common sense, and we haven't even got to the constitutional elements yet, that we have a people have to unitedly say, regardless of party, these people need to leave office. Yeah. And I think that, Sean, strongly, that can only be done by business people, women or men like you and me, who have no political ties, nobody has any strings attached to us, nobody has anything on us, no one can control us, and we're fearless, who will go in and do the right thing, the patriotic right thing, because it's the right thing to do. So here, here's a question then. You've got a lot of people listening to this are probably saying, yeah, I've heard it before. Yeah. And maybe they have, maybe they haven't. When you go in and do this, you make an enemy of everyone. All, I mean, I, I mentioned this to you the other day, like Dan Crenshaw and I always get into it online because I call him out on a lot of stuff. And because he's a Navy SEAL, everybody automatically loves him. And I have nothing but honor and respect for his service and the whole thing. But I'm like, Dan, your office is right down the hall from AOC. You post all the memes all day long and it sounds really fantastic. And everybody's like, oh, that's so funny, Dan. Go get him, go get him. I'm like, but our, our, our taxes are higher, gas is up. Inflation is through the freaking roof and your office is right down the hall. And then naturally people make excuses and say, well, this is in control and that and control the whole thing. So I'm really inter interested to like know what you think it's going to take when you get there to really pull the pin on the proverbial hand grenade and blow up this system that we know is not serving us. Yep. We're not moving in the right direction. We know the inflation's getting higher. De we're at almost $35 trillion. It's something like $100 billion every 90 days is what our, de is what our national debt is going up. It's astronomical. It's, it's ridiculous. Three, it's 300 and something thousand dollars for every single American. It's, it's babies. Your baby's born, great, $300,000 debt. It's they critical. haven't even gone to college yet, right? You go to D.C. and you start calling everybody out. Number one, you make an enemy out of everybody. And number two, like, there's a high probability you're going to have to put some gloves on because people are going to start throwing some punches at you. So what does that like, truly look like for you? Well, first of all, I'm not concerned about when I, I'm going to go speak the truth. And if someone thinks that the truth is their enemy, then I think that's their problem. I have no problem with it whatsoever. So I mean, we, numbers are numbers. Facts don't lie. Facts don't lie. So I'm just going to go tell the truth. I want everyone to join our team. And not only that, I feel it. I feel it here in Utah, and I feel it across the country. There is a movement that's starting. There's a groundswelling of people who are frustrated like I'm frustrated. Agreed. And so if you're frustrated, then you need to come stand with us. And you do that by voting for us, by coming to caucus this Tuesday on March 5th, and by donating. Don't, when you donate money to a campaign, it's a way of saying, I agree and I stand with you. And, and so that's the, that's the first thing people, people can do now. And I always say that because you're asking, what am I going to do? Yeah. I'm one person. What I'm doing, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to help start and lead out in a revolution. That's what I'm trying to do. So... You can only, it's one vote at a time. It's one word at a time. All I can do is what's before me. So when you see something that's wrong, you have the courage to talk about it. So like, for example, for me to say this, when my wife and I, we start our business out of our garage, Sean, out of our garage, and we build it without taking on outside investors, the debt was all from us. And um, there were long periods of time, several long periods of time, we didn't pay ourselves anything so we could pay our customers we could pay our employees that teaches you something about budgeting and about mm -hmm. accountability responsibility i wish that everyone had to run a business and live within a budget and meet a payroll for five years yep. before anyone was allowed to cast a vote on a federal spending bill right it's just common sense right. but since we can't do that how about you say this if you won't pass a balanced budget how about nobody in congress gets paid totally agree don't pay any of us. If right. you're not going to do your job and you're going to bankrupt America, then don't get paid. My yep. guess is, is like just that alone. So I'm happy. I'm talking about it right now on your radio show. I'll talk about it when I get to Washington. I'm not going to change my, my opinion on that. What'll be fun is when you, when you propose something, propose 
a bill, get a, get some people behind you, some legislation to that. It's really interesting because the power of media right now is, is quite interesting. There's a lot of conversation around the mainstream media and this and the other, but there's a grassroots underpinning that I agree with you a thousand percent on. There's yep. a lot of people. And, it, and it's very telling because when what you're saying is fiscally responsible and if I spend more than I make, I go bankrupt. And the 390 million Americans that are listening to this, not all of them are, but we're gonna getting there. We're, yeah. we're trying to get everybody to listen to it, right? But the 390 million Americans that are not in DC, not wearing suits every single day, realize that when they spend more than they make, they go bankrupt too. Right. And so I think what'll be really interesting is when you go in, it, it's really simple to pick your team. I look at it that way. I think it's really simple. Forget Republican, forget Democrat. Let's just talk straight common sense. Like we, again, common sense is very common, but when you propose something and it's like, look, if, if, if this encumbers 390 million people more with money, with more with debt, then it doesn't pass or no one gets paid, you're gonna see who your team is really quick. It, it's the A's and the nays, right? And right. that's what's cool about what you're talking about is we talk revolution and going in and how to blow it up. But like when you bring that stuff to the table and you have a loud enough voice and candidly, when you have a strong enough spine to not necessarily care about the friends and not necessarily care get, uh, about needing to put the gloves on and get punched in the face, you, I, in my opinion, you can really sway people. You can really start to turn heads and get people looking and go, hey, this Jason guy, this is kind of nutty because he's literally saying to himself, don't pay me. It's the same thing Trump said, like, I don't want the, I don't want the salary. Give it to whoever he gave it to, right? Yeah. Same kind of a thing. And I'll get downplayed, but when you have, a, when you have a, an, an upswelling of social media and people behind you and stuff like that, I really do think that that can be a pivotal aspect of change. Sean, it's going to be. If I sound negative, it isn't. I'm, I'm oh, it's not the, at all. I'm here with a message of hope. Yeah. This is a message of we are going to win, right. and we are going to take America back because I feel it. I feel it in talking to Utahns. Every meeting I go to, there's we resonate right. together. We vibrate together, and we realize that there's there's a lot of people who feel this way. It's not just here. Yeah. And, and it's not all politicians. So Senator Mike Lee, right here in Utah, is one of the people who's like one of the original people to lead this charge. So he is not personally enriching himself. Yeah, he is. He is giving up a lot of a, a lot in order to to stand firm on his votes of fiscal responsibility and to protect the Constitution. Some of the things he's actually has coming up, I'm pretty excited to be a part of, like the Rains Acts, which I don't. I don't know how much you want to get into that, but they're, they're acts that are going to chip away at federal federal bureaucracy. So mm -hmm. that if a federal bureaucratic agency is going to make a regulation which has the binding effect of law on you even though that you never voted for these people right which is so contrary to everything that's american that 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 if it's, it has over a hundred million dollars of economic impact that it has to go back and be voted on by the house or the, and the senate which it should have been in the first yeah, place right? right but 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 there's other people i have a friend that i met uh, bernie moreno he's running for the senate in uh in uh, in ohio also just a business person that's fed up and he's had it. And there's more and there's more and there's more. They're gonna be coming to the Senate, they're gonna be coming to the House, and they're gonna be coming because the people are demanding yeah. it. The American people are the ones who are gonna push us forward and say, yes, that's what I want. This person represents my views, and that is why it's gonna happen. Yeah. It's not me, it's the American people. The people right now are the people of Utah. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's, it's fun to be a part of. Malcolm Gladwell talks about, in a, in a really good book, uh, The Tipping Point. Uh, how the pendulum swings. Yeah. And I feel like for the last yep. 50, 60 years, the pendulum has been swinging in this really ineffective, ineffective way of just this big government. I wanted you to talk about that because you mentioned that on your website. Yep. Um, and a lot of people don't even realize what that means. But I feel like we're kind of reaching that tipping point. And I said this when Donald Trump first announced that he was running. I said, you're going to, he's literally going to help dismantle the two party system in the long game, right? And not literally, but very, very, very figuratively in a way where people are looking at it going, look, I, I don't know where I really stand, but what I know is I don't want my kids in debt. I know that I don't want my kids in jeopardy. And I know that I don't want, you know, uh, people okay. in my neighborhood yeah. that are, you know, convicted of, of these different things. But I, I think it's a really fascinating time because I agree with you hundred percent. Like the, the ability that we have now as a people to yep. come together when that voice is there, and I've said this for quite a while, whoever controls the narrative will win. Yep. And so if you can get enough people behind you, 
and I, and and get past all the punches that are going to be thrown. Yep. Jason's a nut job, and he's this, and he's that, and he wears you know yellow shirts, and nobody likes yellow shirts, and yellow shirts are racist, and he's a misogynist. All that crap, which you know is coming, right? You get past that, all of a sudden you realize, like, yeah, that we can create some serious change here. Oh yeah. But I think there's a lot of people that have just reached that point where they've kind of thrown their hands up and said, well, what do I do? Like, what the hell can I, what, what can I even do? Right. And we've got this cycle of voting and voting and voting and electing and electing and electing, you know? And so, so I'm curious what your thoughts are on big government. And, and <laughs> it's a very broad question, but you know, when I ran, I was like, I, I had multiple people say, dude, you should just run as a libertarian. Cause I have way more libertarian views. Like I look at it as like, let's just have a flat tax. Straight across the board, flat tax. People are like, well, you can't afford that. And I said, well, you absolutely can when you cut the government by 50%, right? You fire 50% of the employees and, well, you can't do that. There's all these things that you say you can't do that. Again, that's the gospel according to me, not your policies or your, 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 your stance. But the government is so, for lack of better words, the government is so fucking big. It is. It is so fucking massive. And it, it is a true, it's, it's gluttonous. And there are, and people don't even realize this, man, that when you look at some of the, the, the budgets, there are billions and billions and billions of dollars that go into unaccounted for line items. Line items that literally are unaccounted for, where it's just like billions just disappear. Earmarks. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and when you think about, we've given however many hundreds of billions of dollars to these foreign countries for the wars, and, and admittedly, the government says, well, we don't know where some of this money went. It's like, what do you mean? A lot I, of it. A lot of it. I'm yeah. talking billions. Yeah. Our government is so freaking huge right now. It, it's, it, it almost seems like it just, it's like it can't be stopped in the way that it's going and the size and the scope because it would take as you know as i've said many times radical change requires radical change what do you think about this and like what do you propose to do to bring the business mind and the business sense in order so that it's actually run as a business and something that can be profitable so here comes common sense the first question you have to ask is why is it that way why is business big or not big why government. did the government grow so large why is there such a bureaucracy and this is the answer that i have strategically it's because politicians are gamifying and personally enriching themselves by passing those pork or passing the bureaucracy and i could we could talk literally all day yeah on ways that politicians enrich themselves either politically right. or personally and financially from the from from bureaucracies getting big and this number, isn't republican or democrat no this is across the board this is across the board number two any federal bureaucracy is inherently corrupt and it's because people are inherently corrupt so like and that's why all of us have seen so much corruption so if you can accept that as a premise right which everyone should if not then go start a business and then you'll understand it a little <laughs> bit better so and I'm not, I'm not saying everyone's corrupt sure i'm saying that if no matter what great thing you want to do if you're once you start funding it into a bureaucracy there's going to be corruption always right and so the question is how how, how much is that bureaucracy how much is the corruption rather within that bureaucracy so um Let's just start talking about it honestly. It's a different question to say like why, I mean, there's a different way to attack it. And what I mean by that there's is There's no like, rules here. You can say whatever you want. Okay, so, I, so I call it like when FDR was president, I think that that's what I call the great fracture. So the, the, the constitution has two axes. There's a vertical axis, axis that we call federalism, and there's a horizontal axis that we, that is the separation of powers, right? right? So federalism is the authority that the constitution gives the federal government. And then, uh, and then the state authority is everything else. And so uh, and the separation of powers refers to Article One, Article Two, and Article Three of the Constitution. Article One is the legislature. Article Two is the executive. Legislator makes the laws. Executive carries out the laws. And Article Three is the judici judiciary, which, which interprets the laws. And so when FDR uh, became president, there had been a series of cases that were, and there, are, there were already from the beginning of the United States. And we're gonna, we won't go back to, uh, Alexander Hamilton, I think, wanted to start a bank and some, but Article One, Section Eight of the U.S. Constitution has a clause that's called the Necessary and Proper Clause, and, and then there's a clause that has the Commerce Clause. And the essence, is basically, is let me give an example, is to say, look, yes, the the federal authority is limited with with federalism, but sometimes, in order for commerce to be carried out, the federal government may need to get involved 
And that would be an interpretation of how he could get involved. Well, the, one of the cases I think of as the great fracture was the Wickard Filburn case. And that's where Farmer Filburn was trying to grow some wheat on his farm. And he just was going to have that wheat be on his farm for his family. People lived on the farm, his animals, that's it. And the, the, the very broad interpretation that the, the, the Supreme Court, actually the Supreme Court was probably going to rule in his favor that, yeah, the federal government can't regulate there. That's ridiculous. Common sense would say, of course, the federal government can't do that. But FDR threatened to pack the court with 15 justices or so if, if they didn't go along with him. And so one of the justices changed their mind and they got that passed. I call it the great fracture because if the federal government can come in and regulate how much wheat or if you're growing wheat or whatever you're doing on your own farm, then think about how it could reach into every single one of our lives. And that's where the bureaucracies went crazy. The, the ridiculous thing about this is, is if last if we put the laws that, that the government passed last year if i put them on the ground here it'd be like maybe <laughs> a wild maybe a foot high if we put down the federal register what government bureaucrats passed it'd be 12 13 feet high Th these are people who were never elected to you they're not accountable to you in any way but they can pass regulation as a binding effect of law yeah and that is the fracture of the horizontal or the separation of powers it just isn't right it is not Right. right and uh and that needs to be changed by the way let's let's congratulate president trump some of his justices have had some cases you had some big cases that have just started to chip away at the chevron doctrine and hopefully the aggregation right. principle and some of the things that have led to big government and i think there's some more cases coming so i think one of the funnest things to be a u.s senator would be to and i look forward to voting on on some of the uh, justices that president trump sends to the senate mm -hmm. well how do you how do you it, it, in very layman's terms and maybe you can get into it, maybe you can't. How do you get it under control, number one? And number two, like, what does that look like? Because I'm a, I'm a simpleton. Like, hey, take, take a crayon and a whiteboard. If you can't, I can't, to me, if you can't explain it on a, on a whiteboard, it's too complex. All right. I've so, said this about taxes and the whole thing. Just put like 6.5%, done and done. There's your tax basis. Everybody pays it, whatever, whatever. But like, you're talking about, uh, a, an organization, a legitimate organization, and anybody that doesn't know what, what, what we're talking about, like America is a corporation as, as, as much as Pepsi or Coke. I mean, it is the way that it runs and the way that it collects the taxes and the entire thing. But when you're talking about something that is going further and further into debt by a hundred billion, let yep. that sink in guys, a hundred billion every 90 days. Yep. Not like a year. Every 90 days, the debt grows, which means we're spending more than we're collecting every 90 days. That's, that's unfathomable. And the crazy thing is, is Republican, Democrat, go back the last 50 years, is our national debt bigger or smaller? <laughs> Simple question. Forget your politics. Forget who you think. Oh, the Republicans are going to save us. The Democrats are going to save us. This is a, you know, a conservative thing. This is a liberal thing. The simple fact is over the last 50 years, like it's gotten bigger, it's gotten way more out of hand and, and, and the debt truly is, it's starting to get really scary because it's who, starting owns, to. It is. It's terrifying. who owns some of this debt and where does it go? Like, how do you legitimately it's put terrifying. a stop to that? I mean, you're one man, yep. one guy, but there's got to be a tipping point. There's got to be a breakage point where we like... That's why I'm running, yeah. Yeah, how do you do that? So first, you vote no on continuing resolutions. So what, what you vote no on spending bills. It, like, and some people say, well, you'd really shut down the government. If a government is committed to keep spending in a way that's going to bankrupt you and make you lose, the courageous vote, the courageous vote is to shut down the government. This has to come from the American That's people. That's become such a political thing, though, because how many presidents, you know, the last three, four, five presidents, we reached that 11, 11 o'clock, it's 11.59, we have to do it. We, have, we all know what's going to happen. It, they always end up passing and throwing more money at it to, to just kick the can down the road. So all right. what does that mean, though? And this is what I want you to explain okay. to you. What does it mean when you say shut the government down? What that just or means it, is you're not going to pass. Down. You're not going to pass. The continuing resolution is... is, is is the government will have a, a bill, a spending bill that comes before it that has, it's funding the government. Now, I'm right. not talking about the military or like critical stuff that has to have the, the government to operate, but just a lot of the bureaucratic spe spending. So it's, the, it's to fund the bureaucracies, okay? And so when they can't come to an agreement on it, then they'll say, okay, well, let's table this and have a continuing resolution that will we'll, we'll maybe pass some of it now and, and then let's kick it for three months. 
No. <laughs> no, let's deal with it right now. Let's deal with it right now. So quit. That's the easy vote. That's right. the political vote. That's where people, politicians, are polling their constituents and, and, and trying to convince people that, Anyway, this, sorry, this frustrates me. No, no, no. This, this really, Here's really frustrates this, Jason, me. This is why I want to talk about this. This frustrates me because people... But you, this, have, you have be the careful ability who you to vote speak power. about it. Be careful who right. you vote into power. Here's what else is happening. I'm going to tell you some things people aren't talking about. You ready for this? Yes. Okay. You brought this up. Why does Mitch McConnell, and I know he's out now, so the Republicans are getting new conservatives, well, new Senate leadership. Yeah. By the way, the first vote I'll cast is for conservative Senate leadership. Vote for yourself. Can you vote for yourself? Put your <laughs> name. I'll just write you in. So, so uh, why does Mitch McConnell get together with Chuck, Chuck Schumer and come up with a with a a bill and then give it to senators eleven o'clock at night? Yeah. Why do they do that? Right. Is that in America's best interest? Right. Now, here's what people don't talk about. For, I mean, do your senators get to read that bill? Do you want your senators to read that bill? They're not joking that they don't have the opportunity to read no, it. No, some what's of them happening. are 600 pages long. It's insane. So I've talked to several U.S. senators, Republican senators, and they say that they'll literally have a meeting, and in that meeting, Mitch McConnell will say, I have a, we have a bill coming out next week. It's a good bill. I hope that you all vote for that bill. And the Senate leader fund is up to $600 million. <laughs> Explain this. Number. This is this this is the thing that nobody's talking this about, is and not I am Republican or Democrat. This is what's happening in D.C. right now. People friends. have to talk about this. Right. So what what he's really saying is, if you don't vote for this bill, then I'm I'm threatening you with the Senate Leadership Fund. We won't help you in your next election, and we may believe put money against you. So the Senate Leadership Fund is a legitimate fund yep. that is set up by who, and it's available to who. It's a super PAC, and so there's there's going to be a fund for the. The, the majority party in the House, the minority party in the House, the majority party in the Senate, the minority party in the Senate. That's and this what it, isn't 50 bucks? No, no, no. It's hundreds of millions of dollars. Okay. Right? So, so the guy running that so, goes into a meeting and says to all of the constituents, all <laughs> right. of the other politicians, hey, here's a bill. Yeah. Here's a bill, and it's a good bill. I hope you all vote for it. By the way, the leader fund is up to 400 or 500 or 600 million dollars. And that's... I've been told that there's been meetings and I, I wasn't there, but like that was the whole meeting. Right. So I'll tell you something Senator Ted Cruz told me. He, he told me that when he was running against Beto O'Rourke, because he had voted, and Ted Cruz, feel free to reach out if I'm getting this wrong, but this is my memory of what you said. <laughs> he said that, that he voted against Mitch McConnell for Senate leadership. So because he voted against Mitch McConnell, that lets the Democrats know, oh, that's what put money in his campaign because Mitch McConnell's <laughs> not going to use the Senate leader fund to defend him. Oh, so okay. Beto O'Rourke runs against Ted Cruz and the Democrats, I think, put $65 million into that race. Jeez Louise. And, uh, of course, Senator Cruz tells me that he was asking Mitch McConnell for help, but none came. Yeah. Like, none came. Th these are the underpinnings. This is the stuff that happens that no one obviously t – look – we learned about the Emancipation Proclamation in school. Right. Okay. We knew who Harriet Tubman was. We knew that, you know, Christopher Columbus, you know, blah, 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 sailed the ocean blue. We learned all the rhymes and the history and the things. And, you know, it's fascinating that, that like, this is what our government really is. Like, this is what's happening. And I, th I believe more than anything that we have dumbed people down there's also like the lethargic nature of human beings in general which i don't mean any disrespect from that but the truth of the matter is and you know this there's always going to be winners and there's always going to be losers this has been how it's been since the dawn of creation but if if you're if you have any type of honor and you have any type of you know true desire to better your life you would want the better of the collective I believe that, right? Like I want my neighborhood better because I'm a father and I want my kids to have a better neighborhood than I grew up in, which means if we can better our neighborhood, then we better our state and better our state. You know, it's that, that, that ideology. But what's fascinating to me is this is what's happening inside of DC. This is why every 90 days we go further in the whole $100 billion. And the people, the 535 elected officials that are there are, for, for, for lack of better words, driving that bus yeah in a way that is 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 only self-serving right that's what i'm trying to say not all of them like right. i said there's a few courageous centers out there I, as i've said before i think senator mike lee's definitely leads the charge in that way but like it is self-serving and what we need is the american people to wake up and realize that we can have a shared value system regardless of party 
that says that we are not going to elect people of low character. We're not going to elect people who are going to personally enrich themselves. Yeah. We're not going to elect people who are going to drive us financially, you know, over a cliff, yeah. which we're, we're which we've almost done. And, and we're going to let's talk about the Senate leader funds. Let's talk about how that influences senators. That right. should make everybody frustrated. Most right? people don't even know about that. Well, why don't why? Why are, why are senators not talking about it? Why are congressmen talk, talking right. about it? Let's be honest. Yeah. Fear. Exactly. They're not talking about it because of fear. Why am I talking about it? Yeah. So the people who I know who are influential who sit me down and say, well, the things you're talking about are, are people are going to come after you for them. Yeah, they They're going to come after your character. They're going to come after everything. And so the decision I made with my family when I decided to run is say, look, all I can do is go teach the truth and I get to control my story. If you're going to come at me, I'm going to take the good reputation and my character, which I'm very, very proud of, my 30 year business history of mentoring thousands of young people to help and, and hundreds of them to start their own businesses. I'll go lay that on the altar of liberty. I'll take one for the team, but I'm asking other people like me to step up and do the same. And I'm asking the American people who hear what I'm saying and think that action needs to be taken to stand up with me. And you do that by getting involved. Get off the couch like I'm getting off the couch. I was on it for a long time. Yeah. Get off the couch. It's almost too late. Uh, be a part of my campaign. Support me. Go to caucus on Tuesday. Vote at the, at the be, become a delegate for the state convention. And let's, uh, let's, let's go take this state and the country back. So also, please donate. Send donations. Yeah. Waltonforsenate.com. Get in there. We'll, we'll, we'll put up your, uh, your link and everything else here. Um, I, uh, talk about the military, talk about your thoughts around, uh, we've talked about the border. I think it's pretty clear. Yeah. How do you actually, before you get to the military, like the, the, the border, when, when you talk about, um, the catch and release, obviously that's a huge deal. End it. End it. You know, one of the things that I've, I've always looked at is our immigration system. Yeah. And I looked at this when I was running and it's really shitty for yep. lack of better words yep. it's a really shitty deal like if you do want to come here legally i mean it <laughs> is like you know i i think that people should be my, my great grandparents came from ireland my great grandparents got on a boat both sides of them they came from county cork and kilkenny in ireland and they both immigrated here came yep. to new york with nothing and you know made a life of themselves and that's my love my blood is that's that's where i come from right so i'm eternally grateful that they left ireland and came here and had the opportunity to make something of themselves and build something of themselves but our immigration system just flat out sucks how would you how would you remedy that same thing as a business person think about it strategically and put to, and then think about why what's the problem I'm going to start off with this. We don't have an immigration problem. We have an immigration opportunity. We have the Atlantic Amen. Ocean on one side, the Amen. Pacific on the other. We have Canada above us, and we have Mexico and, and, and uh, Central and South America below us. Cultures down below us, down south, are hardworking, industrious, family-oriented, God-fearing. What more could you want? Are there, do you look around the world and wish that there were other people? I mean, Mexico is fantastic. Yeah. What a great, great cultures in Mexico and, and Latin and South America. I mean... I mean, outstanding. We just managed to screw it up. And it's, I call it our immigration thing is we are snatching defeat out of the jaws of victory. We were handed a softball pitch of victory and we managed to screw it up. So the business part says, and it's simple, and we can talk about this with every policy, Sean, don't incentivize people to do things that are wrong and don't punish people for doing things that are right. right. And if, if, if once it's set up that way, when you see policies like that, you should pause and say, why are they that way? Is it because your elected officials are dumb? The answer is probably not. Well, we like to say that as an excuse. It's probably because they're politically enriching themselves. It's for their own political gain of how they're right. casting their vote or what they're doing. And if and it would take a lot of time, we go through each one and show that that's almost always the case. People act in their own self-interest. So if you're if your congressmen, your senators are voting in a way that looks weird to you, just know they're probably voting in a way that's in their own self-interest. Yeah. So let's talk about it a little bit. My brother was a doctor when I lived, when I lived uh, in Texas, and he was going through uh, uh, doc osteopathic school. And one weekend he was gone. He was, he was, just, he was married, and he married a, a, girl, a woman who was originally from Chile who emigrated to France, and he followed everything to a T. And it took years, yeah. thousands of dollars. And he went to this, this personal hosp ho uh, hospital that he used because he was struggling financial med medical student. Uh, he had to go to the county hospital, which was not the nice hospital. And it was also the hospital a lot of illegal immigrants used, but it cost him a fortune when he started having his oldest child and his second child. I remember he came home one day after a weekend where he was working 
I don't remember how many hours over a two-day shift, and he was just quiet. My brother is one of the best human beings I know. His name's Matt Walton. He's the most, probably the most popular doctor in Spanish Fork, Utah. And, uh, and, I, and I said, what's wrong? And he just said, we had, I think it was like 24 births over the weekend. They were all illegal immigrants. Hmm. So no one paid anything. It was all free. While my brother, who's busting his hump to go through medical school, yeah. and doing else is being taxed and punished. And also all the society all around, everyone is punished. So let's talk about the policy of catch and release. What that really does is it makes a human trafficking market for the cartels to exploit, sure. which they are. Right. Because you're saying, oh, okay, that's great. I can charge people a lot of money. Senator, Senator Ted Cruz told me that they give bracelets. To, the cartels give bracelets to people coming across the border. The bracelet indicates how much money you owe them. And if you don't pay up, then we know where your family is, right? And we maybe know where you are too. They, they, it, they, they sell you know, women and, and probably others. And, and, and I, won't, I won't be too graphic, but into, into mm -hmm. sex trade. And that's, it's, we created that, 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 that human trafficking market. We did that. And it makes you wonder when you look at it, and I'm not accusing anyone of this, but when you look at aligned incentives, it looks like the cartels and the senators and, de and, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, the our, our members of Congress who are doing it, their incentives are aligned. Right, right. If not, why, why are you doing that? And so, like I said, this political gaming has just got to stop. And we just have to have people who come in with common sense, who aren't going to be threatened by the leader fund, who aren't going to be threatened by the PACs, who aren't going to be threatened by the other senators or the other congressmen, and be supported. What it is going to require is the support of the American people who say enough is enough. Right. We demand common sense. And when you do that, Sean, it's going to, it's going to decrease spending. The people have to demand it. You do right. that, but you have a vote vote them out of office yeah we need demand there's a lot of people that are demanding it it's just there's not a lot of change happening you know what i mean and you and i both know this game takes a lot of money and you know it rules a lot of of the rules of the game yeah we've got into that but that's a whole other podcast about yeah. that I've, tr I've tried to talk about things that nobody talks about because i'm fearless yeah yeah so so how, how does that play into it because i i i see in in understanding the political s space like you know, you, you look at where people are and there's a lot of conversation on the right and the conservatives of, you know, revolution and take, I hear all the time, take the country back. We're going to take the country yeah. back. And then I bode the question, you know, well, number one, what does that mean? And number two, who are we taking it back from? You know, yeah. this is kind of the, the, the thing where I talk about people like society's totally screwed up. I'm like, newsflash, you are society. Yeah. I am society. Yeah. So for me to say society screwed up, I... I'm a member of this society. It's like this screwed up club. I'm part of this club. You're part of this club, right? right. So it's, it's, you, you got to step back from that labeling these things as bad and realize like I am part of this reality. And, and I think one of the things that, that, you know, you're very much in line with from a business stance is really empowering and helping people get their house in order. I've talked about that a lot on social media and, and getting to the place where they can actually spend time and energy and money on these types of things. So talk about that for a second, because without people getting their home in order and continuing to perpetuate a victim mentality, a victim society, there won't be people that you can't rally the troops. You know, when Paul Revere came to town, if you're out there farming and whatever, whatever you, they didn't, it was either keep doing that or roll with me because if you keep doing that, the British are coming and they're going to kill you or you roll with me and you got a fighting chance. And that's really what you're saying to people is, hey, this is a really, really dark situation. Get your shit together yeah. and come roll with me. Yeah, well, I mean, I would just say this, like career politicians hold the American dream in contempt, like literally. They hold that dream in contempt. That's why guys like you and I, you try to go do the right thing and you get punished for oh, it. They just punch you get right punished. In the face. Have you ever gone, for those of you who are entrepreneurs, to a government regulator to try to get out ahead <laughs> and said, hey, <laughs> just because I want to do this right, here's what I'm doing. I just want to make sure I'm doing it right. right. Yeah, you'll get kicked in the teeth. I right. remember the first time I did that and the second time and the third time. Right. The other time I was thinking, well, it's just got to be a one-off. Right. And, and it isn't. So I'm going to speak to two things to answer your question. Number one, the conservatives, in my opinion, all of us have done a very poor job compared to the left of branding and marketing. And this is where business can come into town. Right. So the Affordable Health Care Act, with a, it's not affordable. Everyone's insurance went up immediately a lot. Right. So uh, the Anti-Inflation 
Act, which causes inflation, right? The Green New Deal, which is not a Green New Deal. So like we could keep going and going and going on, right. on down each one. They've done a great job. Not only have they done a good job of branding that, but what what are, what are you if you have a particular if you support a particular can or something? Oh, you're a racist. You're a bigot. You're an insurrectionist. And so it, it's interesting because it silenced a lot of people on the on the right into like being afraid to even speak up to the point literally that our country's got to the point which I would have never thought when I was a kid, that a biological male, which is just a male, <laughs> by the way, that a male would be competing in women's collegiate sports. I would have never thought I saw the day of that. And how many people on the right are afraid to actually say that out loud? When we're doing on the radio show, how many people are right. saying, oh, I can't believe you said that? Yeah. That where have we got to when we say that? And I'm not coming from any place of hate or, or malice or frustration. I think that like we just need to be able to openly talk right. and i think we need to do a better job as, as a republican party and as conservatives of coming up with branding and marketing and stepping up and helping people with us to feel comfortable to go share our views to have like meaningful helpful political discussion the other thing i want to say we say take the country back can i address that yeah, a little bit 100 so that's part of it part of it is actually from a business standpoint and a marketing standpoint getting a little bit more organized and being smarter about what we do. And, and I don't think the answer for that's career politicians. How about get some of us in there that that's what we do. Number two, I think that America, how do you look at it and not think that there was like, and the constitution, like the divine wasn't, wasn't part of it. I mean, let's talk about the constitution and what a special document that is. So you had Europeans who were suffering under tyranny kings and queens, a lot of top authority, right. federal, what we'd call federal authority, very little local, local authority. And these people had that pushed into their blood for, for generations to where it was they're boiling over saying, I want freedom. I want to go somewhere where I can, I can keep what I earn. That used to be us, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I know. So, and this is what I mean by taking... This take, country was founded over a 1% tax hike, just so people understand, on T. So... So they came to America, got here mainly, the, and I'm talking about Europeans of the six, 1600s, tried to figure it out. But people who came here with a shared value system, they wanted religious liberty and they wanted to be able to keep what they earned and have opportunity. Capitalism. It was founded on this concept that capitalism was good and that it would help, uh, uh, that it would help, it's the best way to help the most people. And, and so they eventually made the Articles of Confederation. Well, I should back up. They went to war. They had the stones to go to war with the greatest country of military, military power on yeah. the earth and won. How much courage would it take to have done that? So, and they, how much? They won. Then they do the Articles of Confederation. Didn't work out so well. Then they, they um, eventually put together the Constitution. Now, if we want to go back, it'd be fun to go back and read the Federalist Papers and things that different founding fathers were writing back and forth. I just want to say that like the, the, the Constitution, you can't look at what happened historically and not realize that there was some divine wisdom in crafting it. Right. So it, it came from the wisdom of experience, the wisdom of geography, wisdom of everything. And, it's, and, and those, those founding fathers that had that, all of our ancestors, it was really important to them, the, the elect, things like that the electorate, the people who make the laws, are going to be the most accountable to the American people. The House of Representatives, you get to vote them in and out every two years. So mm -hmm. if they're making laws you don't like, then you replace them. Senators, a little less so, every six years. So be a little bit more careful with them. President, every four years. It was unconscionable that you're going to get a group of people who are passing regulations that we call bureaucracies today. They're going to be passing the majority of the things, the regulations of the binding effect of law on you. For example, might be law that says you can have uh, this rifle. And there's nothing wrong with it. And some bureaucrat that you didn't vote for can say, actually, if it has these two or three things on it, then it's a felony. So someone you did not vote for, someone you didn't elect, a bureaucratic regulator ha can do something as a binding effect of law to make 10,000 Americans hypothetically felons. Right. Like that was, that's the opposite of what, of what was being discussed and talked about by both parties, I might add, yeah. uh, it, it, when, the, when the country was founded. And what happened when that constitution came into effect? And this is, I think people need to talk about this a little bit more. What happened? The constitution's not the flag. 
It's not a symbol. It is the document that is actually providing you and I in America our freedom and our liberty on an hour-by-hour, minute-by-minute timetable. It's doing it now as we're sitting here talking. It's trying to. We're trying to suffocate it and fracture it, but it's trying to. And so once that delicate balance of government, of the Constitution, was put into effect, the greatest civilization that the world has ever seen erupted over the next 150 years. Greater than Rome, Constantinople, Babylon. We put everything to shame. It wasn't an accident, right, Sean? Right. It was not an accident. It's because the Constitution's special. And I think that our enemies and others, are when they combat us in a kind of a Machiavellian way, since they can't take us militarily, they're trying to program us to be embarrassed of capitalism, to be embarrassed of our history. I'm not saying we didn't make mistakes, sure. but you don't go erase all of it. Right. You learn and move forward just like we do with our parents. Do our parents do some things that were incorrect? Do you cancel them? Right. Hopefully we improve and we move on and we move forward. But there are other powers that want us to think capitalism is evil that the Constitution's bad. It needs to be completely redone. It's out of date. The Founding Fathers didn't foresee our day. All those things are not true. They're all meant to undermine us as a country and as a people. And what's bothering me, Sean, is it's working. Right. It's working. How do you combat, and this is the main question I'm gonna, that you've kind of asked, but I'm gonna word it differently. How do you combat when the American people choose socialism and Marxism? How do you combat that? And the answer is, that's when you lose the game. When people realize that when you put in the work, you don't get to earn what you put in the work for. But if you choose not to work and you not to do things, then you're going to be rewarded for doing that. That is not sustainable. You do not tax a country ever into prosperity. That's not the yep. way it works. It's contrary to everything. It's contrary to productivity. It's contrary to even common sense. Yeah. And so the, it, it's, the, it's the revolution of taking the country back is to go back to our principles, to value the Constitution, to recognize it, and then to, to go and correct it, knock off the rust and the tarnish and the ways that we fractured it, embrace it, realize that it was working fine, and then restore it. Restore common sense, restore conservative constitutional governance. And if we do that, Sean, the pe people are rising up. But the answer is, can I as a senator, any one person go and change America? It requires Americans to come together, think, discuss. It's like you said, social media platforms, people coming together in a peaceful way and saying, we are demanding, we're taking the country back because if the majority of, of Americans want socialism and Marxism, we're gonna get socialism and Marxism. Maybe after a war, but socialism and Marxism. Yeah. I don't think they do. I, think, I don't think people really do. And I think the people that, they, that, that, uh, that talk about this and, I, and, then, and this younger generation that we commonly refer to, they obviously haven't spent any time in third world countries or they would understand what that really looks like. But what's interesting is the division right now. Like the division in this country. Yeah. And what I like about what you're saying and, and I truly believe this. I, 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 don't, I don't believe we're too far gone. I don't Me believe no, that, no. We're gonna win. that the, 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 the minority can speak for the majority. And you know, if you want to identify as a fire hydrant, I don't really care. You can be a fucking fire hydrant, but I don't need to recognize you as a fire hydrant, right? I think that there are more people in this country that have that common sense. They simply are living in fear. They're right. living in fear of those labels, of those deals. And what right. I truly believe is like when, when you have some people with some audacity and quite literally, you know, for lack of better words, some, that have some balls that can stand up and take on these conversations and, and really not in a way of defiance, but in unification. Because yes. at the end of the day, the Constitution is there for everybody. Yes. Black, white, gay, straight, rich, poor. Yep. Like you don't want to not have freedom of speech. Right. Period. Because once you cross that threshold, now everybody's a target. That's right. And, and there will come a point in time, maybe your guy's up in the White House right now and you're rah, rah, rah. Yeah, that's my guy. But there will be a point in time when that script flips. That's right. And now everything that you want to be free and whatever is now banned. Yes. And, and yeah. that's what I think a lot of people don't understand. And what's interesting to me is I love the Declaration of Independence. Me too. Um, 
and I, I, I could pull it up, but there's a part in the declaration where it talks about when, for lack of better words, I'm just going to paraphrase it. This is the gospel according to Sean Whalen. I'm rewriting the declaration of independence right now. Go for it. But it's written really well when it talks about how, when the government becomes so big and so dangerous that it's not only the, the right, but it's the duty. It says in the declaration, the duty of the people to replace it. I should pull it up so I'm not misquoting it. But it says it. I promise you. It's the duty of the people. Not just the right. Like when you start thinking that way and understanding like that depth and that reality, like it, you start kind of going, okay, well, how far down this rabbit hole do we go? What does that really mean? I know what that means. You and I have talked about this. And a lot of people really don't want to talk about 1774 and 1775 and what it took those patriots to do to sit in there in their little cottages with their little pipes and they're out there plowing all day long and they're coming together going, okay, like, like look, are we, what are we doing here? Are we, what are we doing? Like, are we really going to like live by this? Are we letting the king come over and take our money and do our th- deal? Or are we going to be slaves right. or are we going to fight? And that's, I think there's a lot of conversation happening with that. And I hear more and more and more people talking about that. And that's where this whole, you know, January 6th debacle, which was really a, just a tourist attraction in DC. There was no quote unquote insurrection or anything. I mean, you had grandma great walking around with her little tumbler mug, like waving a flag for hell's sake. Like there, there was, there was, you know, no threat to our democracy that day. But I'm really intrigued by this. I wish because, I knew how many FBI agents were in that crowd. Oh, dude, if, you know, <laughs> it, that, that's, a, that's a whole other podcast for a whole other day. That, that requires some cigars and some whiskey to sit down for that one. But it, I'm really intrigued what your thoughts are around this because the Declaration talks about this. And in no way, shape, or form am I saying that we, we're, we're claiming this or trying to run out and do this. But our country was founded on rebellion. Our country was founded by savages. Our country was founded, like the freedoms that we enjoy, the Constitution, this blanket ability for people to say whatever they want on both sides of the aisle, on whatever freaking flag you fly, the whole deal. Like there's a real interesting conversation happening where if this continues to go down, you know, the rabbit hole and go further and further and further, like we will literally lose the ability to have any type of law. There really won't be. I mean, communism can't happen in this country. The reason it can't happen is because there's 200 plus million gun owners and a good majority of them don't like communism and capitalism will continue on and we will still be free people. Uh, But I'm, I'm really intrigued to know your thoughts on that because, you know, the Declaration of Independence talks about replacing and it's our duty to do that. Like, what does that look like for you? Well, first off, there was a time back, I don't remember, it was 2012 to 2015, somewhere in there, where you it was legal to go to Cuba. Right. And I took my family there for uh, New Year's Eve, and we were there for about a week, I think, legally. We flew directly from Miami to Havana. And it was a heck of an experience, because we got to know the Cuban people and uh, would go into the city and meet them and, and talk to them, great people. I, I mean, just a lot of wonderful people. But when they would talk about... Uh, the colonialism and Spanish versus United States and then Russia uh, getting involved. And you can even see it in the architecture around town. Mm-hmm. But uh, this, this, there were several people who would talk about the hard days when they were literally boiling leather to eat it because they were starving. Right. And one of my daughters, Jessica, said, why didn't you revolt? And they said... With what pitchforks and shovels? And I think I think that our, this is there's wisdom in our founding fathers that we just too easily dismiss. That there's the Second Amendment came into being to mainly to protect ourselves from our government. That's right. what they were afraid of. And for people today to say that's not a threat anymore is respectfully. I love having the conversation when it's respectful both sure. ways that I disagree. I don't know there's ever been more of a time right. when the Second Amendment's been, been, uh, been important for that reason. I don't think we're gonna come to actual like, armed conflict. I don't think that's what's gonna happen. I don't see that. I don't walk around the streets here and think, oh my goodness, uh, people are about, it. look, if you, it's like you talked about, if you're having water and food and you have yeah, shelter. Yeah, food, water, shelter. Yeah, food, water, shelter, everything's probably gonna be, everything's probably gonna be just fine. Uh, no matter what, whether there's guns or not, you don't have food, water, shelter, and, and it's probably going to be some tough times. Right. Right. I think there's, isn't that what The Walking Dead's about? 
<laughs> I haven't seen it, but I've yeah. heard. Anyway, so um, I think um, I think that I love to read George Washington's farewell address, and in there he's encouraging people to sacredly maintain the Constitution. It's pretty close to paraphrasing. With yeah. wisdom and virtue are two other words that he uses. And so I just I think that the thing that we need to do as a country, for the left and the right, it's okay to disagree. In fact, democracy, a republic like ours, is meant to be messy. It counts on the fact that you disagree. We can, right. like in a marriage, we can value those differences and come together and sit down and talk. It's just not good when we when it when we one one side feels like they can't, or they're ashamed or we get militant. And I think that the, the network propaganda has done a lot to like pit us against these, ourselves. Totally. Another place I took my family was to Rwanda. I, you've got to go, Sean. We went to the Genocide Museum. And our guides, we had one that was a, was a Hutu and one that was a Tutsi. And that's, if you remember the, right. the genocide, yep. that's where bad things were happening. It was a genocide. And we went to the, the Genocide Museum and listened to this, how there was this radio producer who was whipping everybody into a frenzy. And it reminds me of the network propaganda that we have now. I mean, just whipping people into a frenzy. Then they had, I think, I think like a half a million machetes that came in, and then there was a call to action. And, and, I, and, and I think, um, let's just tell it straight. Network propaganda is meant to make money. In fact, Sean, if, as a business person, <laughs> it would make sense, kind of like John Steinbeck's The Pearl, the book, mm -hmm. to own both CNN and Fox. Yeah, because you know what your market is, and so like you, you could actually totally control. It looks to me like it's owned by one company. It's and a I, I playbook. To me, it looks like it's owned by one company because the more you own it, you can like uh, orchestrate could, it. Yeah, orchestrate it so you can maximize your money on both sides, right? right? And so it, it um, I just think people need to realize that like the network media now is a business. Right. And the business is to do what I think that was happening by that radio show that I saw in Rwanda. And I don't think it's in the American people's best interest. So I'm concerned about social media and how the algorithms put you into a silo. Mm -hmm. You do a search and it just starts feeding you things. And that also reminds me of, of what I saw in Rwanda. It's just the modern day version of it. So I think, I think that it's great to push for healthy discourse on both sides that, that are factual. It, it really bothers me that, that when either someone from the left or the right will go speak at a university and they'll be banned. Yeah. It terrifies me, Sean, yeah. because once we stop talking and, 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 and civilly share ideas and discuss those ideas, that's where I think we're headed for problems and right. we're getting to that point. So, um, I, I mean, to answer to your question, I think that, um, it was, it wasn't really a loaded question. It was just more of a, you know, let's talk about 1775 and 1774. Cause it's real. I mean, there's a, I, I, I don't, it is real. And, and I understand from a political standpoint that there, there's a lot of topics that are that are heavy. There's a lot of topics that are not necessarily socially acceptable. But the truth of the matter is there's so few people talking about how this country was really formed. And there's so few people that, that want to acknowledge that that it wasn't pretty and it was dirty. Yeah. And in order to create change, it takes it takes sometimes some dirt. Yep. I mean, at the end of the day, like one of the best ways to stop a bully and I've said this and maybe people agree with me or don't agree with me but a dude keeps bullying and bullying you can send him to the principal's office or you go kick the shit out of him and Punch once you kick the shit out of him then he's not going to bully anybody because now he's been served right now people will disagree with me and tell me that that's how you perpetuate bully I don't really care but I, I'm really. But, but if you've never punched somebody in the tip of the nose, the majority of people are done. You, exactly. you have to hit them that hard; they just don't yeah, like it. It's, it's true. It's true. But I, I believe I, I'm with you a thousand percent. I think that the pendulum is swinging, and I think that you know, there, there. If you think about social media, it's only been around for like really been around for like eight or nine years, like yeah. heavy. Yeah. It was around like what, 12, 13, 14, or yeah. what, 15 years or whatever else. But like it, and it has massive, massive, massive influence. But the system is, can always be gamed, and it can be gamed either way, right? And, and we all know how this works. And I think stepping back, and the reason that I wanted you know, to really ask, is, ask that question is because I think that, that if the people who are out there you know, talking about getting the, taking the country back and doing these things and, and, and getting you know, angry, there's nothing wrong with that. 
I think what people need to do is they need to start getting their own personal house in order because yeah. tens of millions of Americans who are educated, who are well taken care of emotionally, who are well taken care of, you know, financially, who are armed and trained and capable of protecting their own, tens of millions of people like that that's a really interesting conversation to have because if you really stop and think about it, I mean, there's 535 elected officials in DC yep. and 380 and change million Americans. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So when you start really looking at a king and a whole bunch of freaking uh, colonists, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Thank heavens for the second amendment. I to totally, totally agree. And I, I think it's a, it's a really interesting time. And I, I love the idea of you going to DC and, and being vocal. I love the idea of you going to DC and shaking the tree because we've heard it. A lot of people have talked about it. A lot of guys, you know, I, I sat and watched John Curtis, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I mean, we all know he was a Democrat that decided to be a Republican because this is a very con conservative state and he knew that he could win there, but not win as a Democrat. And that speaks volumes of, of, of a man's character. But I truly believe that like when you go to DC, somebody like you who doesn't need the money you don't need the acumen you don't need the fame you know what i'm saying it's the same thing with trump he was already famous i, I don't want it actually trump I, was, I, he was already famous yeah I, I i i very much think that this the the i can relate with my my what i'm doing yeah. to what i saw uh president president trump do right. too right to just say i've had it and i'm coming in yeah and, I'm going to, I'm going to, it's kind of a sacrifice, right? Well, you're not going to want the fame, but you're going to get it. Just so you know. No, I, I don't want it. And, <laughs> you go uh, that, shake that's the tree. Of, it's coming, my friend. That, I that's, promise. <laughs> that's, that's part of the sacrifice. I hope that we can start framing our, our, our conversations around the constitution. Yeah. I think it's great when you're going to have a debate to go, to go say, here's the constitution and, and let's put it in that type of a framework. Right. Cause people, what I don't like is when, and, and the second amendment's an easy one to discuss. When people will say, do you believe in the Second Amendment? Well, sure, I believe in it. It was passed. Right. We can read it. It doesn't matter if I believe in it right. or not. Well, are, are you going to defend our guns? Yeah. Let's talk about what, what, what the Constitution really is. The, cost, the whole point was to, to give very limited authority to the federal, which right. we've now flipped on its head, and the rest of the states. It was originally, when the Constitution was signed originally, the day it was signed, the ink was wet. Right. The authority to pass laws to govern guns rested with the states and the communities. They could have done whatever they wanted. But they were so concerned about it that they delegated that authority, dare I say, that sacred authority. Mm -hmm. And it's not back to the federal government because they said, we don't want anyone to be able to be able to take that right away. Yeah. And it's not easy to pass an amendment. You have to get two thirds, not a simple majority, of the House and the Senate, then signed. Then you have to get three quarters, three out of every four state legislatures to adopt it. So once that's done, the American people aren't, they're saying we really want this right and so to so now if, I, if you're in the u.s senate i don't care whether you like guns or not turns out i have some sure. but whether, whether you like them or not your duty if you're a, if you're a constitutionalist and you this is what it means to defend or protect the constitution you're defending the will of the people you're defending the sacredness of that document or if I, you don't want to say sacredness the brilliance of it yeah and it is both brilliant and sacred so if if state legislators or communities are trying to circumvent the second amendment with red flag laws or whatever you vote those things down you vote them down and if people want to do it differently then go overturn the second amendment yeah which i hope never happens right and so it's but but with every issue i i, I think that we need to get back to taking that authority and this is the federal bureaucracy and chipping it away uh people keep asking me about state issues what do you think of this state issue or, and I say, my job in the federal government is to make sure it stays as a state issue. I want to go get every mm -hmm. issue I can, the, 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 according That's to how I read the Constitution. Right. Yeah, and I want to like preserve that authority so that the decisions that are the most important, the most personal decisions, right. are the ones you want decided at the local level, in your communities, in your state. Do you need California and New York deciding you know, key important issues for you and you to be bound by that, something becomes federal law. Good luck in changing it. Sure. If there's a state law that's different, there's only three point something million people in Utah. You actually can change that. Right. And so as a, as a you know, if I, if I, I like to, I like to base all conversations on the constitution. Let's start there and let's talk about it and see where it comes from. I believe that that document is still perfectly valid and powerful. We are just, abusing it yeah and we need to stop I totally agree uh what are you going to do on your uh first day as senator uh first day i'm gonna i'm gonna vote for new conservative senate leadership very first day 
So and for, for me, and I don't know if it embarrasses him, I'd, I'd vote for Mike Lee like first day. But there's others that could do it. But that's Senator Lee. I, I just – it's maybe it's because I've got to know him before I started running for the Senate. I just yeah. think – he's just a man of honor and a man of character like i, I mean and people could i've talked to people who said different or they they sure. feel differently and it's okay to to believe you know to differ with him politically i believe in my heart man to man he's a good human being a person of good character and that's how i'm running too yeah i've tried to say look you may disagree with me on on policy and principle but I'm I am just straightforward. Yeah. And I, and and if you want to come tell me how I'm wrong, I'll try to str- frame it with the Constitution. That's how we're going to frame the con- the conversation. Yeah. And as long as you're coming to me telling me how I'm wrong and it's principle, you really right. believe it. Right. I will listen. And right. it's possible you change my mind once you start making it. Hey, you know this may not be politically okay for you. You probably lost me. I don't know if I'll talk to you again. Yeah, yeah. We well, don't like your uh, your gray hair, and you got a problem, and you're this. And you're I'm that. talking about the corruption of it. Hey, you know that position may not be too popular the yeah. next election. Step aside, dude. AOC has her little pack of uh, girls. What do they call them? The the her and her little pack. Yeah, of girls. yeah, yeah. I don't want to. I don't. I don't you wanna... and, you and uh, Mike need to get together and have your little uh, start a little boys club in D.C. Well, think I mean, there kind it. of already is one, but not a corrupt one. Not like a bunch of shitbags, but like a bunch of good politicians and like create kind of like, you know, some old school sandlot type of deal. <laughs> well, Utah should think about this a little bit. So um, in Kentucky, you have Rand Paul right. and Mitch McConnell that kind of are negating each other. Right. Right. In Texas, you have Ted Cruz, Cruz. and John Cornyn. Right. They're kind of negating each other. And then, and here, imagine what it would be like, because it didn't look to me like Senator Lee and Senator Romney were on the same page most of the time. Right. right. So imagine if you had two, two conservative senators who, who, who get along and are on the same page. Yeah. It's not like a one plus one effect. It's like a multiplying effect. Sure. And uh, so I, I, I hope that that's, I hope that that's Dude, the case. Go in there and rally everybody. You get everybody around the state, go take everybody out hunting or something like that. Be like, look, fellas, here's I think that we can do a lot of good. Let's go back to 1775, bring them out to the barn. You know, put a bunch of folding chairs in there. Be like, fellas, this is how this is going to go. <laughs> like, let me tell you how the new game is going to be played. Okay. I think we could do a lot of good. And I think it'd also be good for Utah because yeah. I think it would give Utah a booming voice. I, I agree. What, uh, what's the final, uh, final thoughts that you want people to know and, and think about going into the election? And then number two, where do you want everybody to go and, and what do you want them to do? Okay. So my final thoughts uh, on that, I'll start with the second one. Uh, caucus is Tuesday, March 5th from seven to nine. You can just go to precinctportal.org and see where you go to caucus and show up. So this is important. You should do it because it's your civic duty. It's, instead of complaining and yep. saying, I wish it was whatever, like jump in, get off the couch and jump in, precinctportal.org. It will tell you where to go. You put in your address and it'll tell you. And this is, caucuses are small. It's just something little in your neighborhood. And you show up and you elect a delegate. If you're brave, I'm asking that you elect, you, you, would, you would come support me and you'd be a Walton delegate. Then you go to the state convention on, on April 27th. At the state convention, you get a vote for all for the different offices, for governor, for the congressional office, and I'm hoping that as delegate you'd vote for 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 me uh, in this election for the United States Senate. Um, and uh, and then we go to the primaries. We'll see who comes out. We go to the primaries and see who wins. Uh, my my final thought is like I am interviewing to the American people. I'm I'm, I'm interviewing and saying I did not want to be in politics. I've never been in politics. I've had a deep distrust of politicians and big government Uh, 30 years that I've been running my business and I've been felt like I've been fighting it the whole time and but what have I done to be part of the solution the way I was part of the solution is I was living the American dream and mentoring hundreds of other people to live the American dream by starting their own successful business I do it now and I'm immensely proud of it but I was not getting involved civically and so I really believe that the country's at a tipping point I'm worried but the message is still a message of hope. And so I'm jumping in and I'm interviewing. So I'm asking the people of the state of Utah, will you hire me? Will you hire me? Will you let me do this? I will take the skill set that I've developed of being hard nosed, starting my business out of my garage and building it into a large national company on our own by learning how to budget and make hard decisions, organize human and capital resources into a strategic vision. I will go do that for the state of Utah and for the United States of America if you will have me. And if not, I understand. So I honestly believe in my heart of hearts that I'm offering something unique and I'm willing to, if that's the case, like put my 
my, my sacrifice on the altar of, of, of liberty for my country, I'm not even going to be paid. I'm going to take the money that comes to avoid the impropriety of everything, and I'm going to donate, back, donate it back to Utah charities and causes. One of those causes may well be to re repeal SB 54, by the way, the getting into the uh, yeah, yeah for, by using signatures. Right. So, um, yeah, I'm appealing directly to the American people. I've asked no one for an endorsement because I think that when I look at people's endorsements, I think, oh, that's who you're accountable to. That's who has their hooks into you. That's who you're doing. I mean, there's, there's people who are coming and endorsing me. I just haven't gone and made my list because I'm asking the people of Utah to endorse me. I'm asking for mothers and fathers and, and young people, old and young, grandparents who are concerned about, do you really trust a, the senator you're voting for if they're a career politician? Of going for six years that are not accountable to you at a time when the spending is out of control. Who are you really gonna trust to make that hard vote? And if anyone that has any political ties are gonna be influenced politically, good luck because it's probably not going to go the way that you hoped. We've been burned in Utah before with that. So I say to the U people of Utah, send me, elect me. I'll go do what you wish that your senator, what senators have been doing. I will go say the things that you want to say that people aren't saying. And I think that's one of the reasons why, whether you like him or don't like him, people like, like Donald Trump, because at least he was speaking his mind. Right. I have a different way of speaking my mind, but, uh, but it is going to be the truth. And so and I, I, I think that... Uh, I will do everything I can to represent the, the, the people of the state of Utah the way that they've been hungering and thirsting for and, and, and to some extent haven't been receiving. And if you don't like what I'm doing, fire me. I'm excited to watch it, man. Yeah. I'm excited it's to It's going to be this. fun. I'm excited to do it. I'm and excited I'm hopeful. for you. Now, the country is going to be different. There, 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 there is an uprising. There is a message of hope. Patriots yeah. are standing up all over yeah, the country. I agree. So and like, it's like I say, we're going to retake the Senate. We're going to keep the House. We're going to defeat uh, Biden. I'm, pre I'm sure we're going to elect Trump. I look forward to working with him, especially on all the policies that I'm most excited about. And uh, we're going to usher in a new, a new era of prosperity to, for people living the American dream, restoring the Constitution, restoring common sense. We're going to go do the right thing. How about this? Just because it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I like it. What uh, What's your website? Uh, Walton for Senate. Walton F O R S E N A T. Walton for Senate. Go there. Donate some money too. Uh, a lot of people don't realize how important it is. Oh yeah. Uh, for flyers, for to get your word out, to get the message out. A lot of people don't realize how much campaigns truly cost, and when you're not uh, taking money from you know big conglomerates <laughs> and packs and things like that, it costs a lot of money to you know to send out flyers and to put out those annoying crazy uh, signs on every single intersection <laughs> of every single you know street in uh, in all of utah but you need to do it because at the end of the day it's got to be done sean if, if so donate if, if ten thousand utahns send in 50 bucks that'd be awesome yeah that's and a, if you don't have 50 good. bucks then 20 bucks you don't have that then 10 bucks you don't have that then five dollars i let out i put in a substantial amount but the, the the truth is if a lot of utahns aren't donating that means they don't want to stand with me and that right. means they want someone else right now in, in this in this election you do have packs that are coming in special interest groups that i don't want to talk about but there there are people coming with large dollar amounts yep. maybe if, if you're a conservative you may not like who's coming in so you can look it up on your own. I won't want to go there, but you should, you know, it's worth looking at. So not coming in for me. I'll tell you that. Packs, those packs come in for one reason. It's because they have an agenda and they want that, 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 that senator, that congressman to do their bidding. Yep. That's it. That's how it works. So I'm asking, that, I'm asking for it from the people of Utah. If you like what I'm saying, then please come, literally, come stand with me and let's go do this together. I love it. Uh, 2.0, our, our next podcast will be after your senator. Uh, and that my only request is I guarantee I, I already know it. I, I can't guarantee this, but I know for certain there's got to be a really cool cigar room someplace. <laughs> I know you don't say smoke cigars, but we've got to do the podcast there. Done. You know what I'm saying? There's got to be some old school picture of George Washington that we could smoke a cigar near and, and do podcast number two once you're a senator and in D.C. You can choose whether that's in Utah or whether it's in D.C. If you want D.C., I'll go find a place. I freaking love it. And I'll go. Man. So that's a commitment, I love, Sean. That's I love D.C. Well, it's senator, a commitment. Uh, senator Walton, I'm excited for you. Guys, you. Uh, please share this podcast. Uh, please go to his website. 
Um, obviously, there's a lot of people not in Utah that, that are listening to this, but there's a ton of people in Utah. If you're in Utah, spread the word, man. This is the real grassroots, and you hear the words, and it sounds kind of cheesy and cliche, and it's blah, 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 but it really fucking matters, man. It really does. Like, this country is in disarray. I don't think there's anybody that would disagree with it, and you can do one of two things. You can kick the can. We can kick the, the can down the road and say, well, somebody else will solve the problem, but a dude is willing to put his time, energy, money, reputation, and name on the line, I've got nothing but respect for it because it's, it's it's a dirty game and it, it will be a hard 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 fight for you to get uh to get in there but i'm a fighter you're a fighter and and i'm always up for a good freaking challenge hey for the people who aren't utah i want you to think about this for a second they put 65 million dollars against ted cruz and i heard it maybe as much as 100 million this round so if you're in california and you're thinking hey we're not going to get a senator in there that i like or you're in some other state like Make Jason Senate, your guy. Make Jason Senate, your guy. There's only 100 senators. 100. Yeah. And we're voting on federal, national issues. Right. So, like, your, your $1 investment in my campaign will go farther than about any other Senate race in the country. This Senate race, we would win with just, I'm putting in seven figures of my own. We'll win if we get an, another few million coming in, yeah. as opposed to 70 million somewhere else right. or 45 million. This is the most efficient, best investment of your dollar if you want to invest in the future of America, in my opinion, is investing in, in my campaign. Let's and I it. invite everyone to do it. Let's do it. Guys, we will have the links uh, around this podcast wherever you're watching it or listening to it. Uh, please donate. Uh, please support and endorse. Uh, the biggest thing for us to do uh, is collectively share this through social media because you know you have a voice we have the ability so we will link obviously all of this out and uh, make sure that everybody listening has access to you know your website to donate to, to um, you know to participate but most of all share like that's the thing you get a you get a lot of people sharing the voice sharing the message sharing you and uh, you know next thing we know you're you're a senator and you're all hoity-toity in D.C., you know what I'm saying? That could be a hoity-toity. So, but <laughs> but uh, hey, this has been a lot of fun. Thanks it's for good having chatting me on, with you, man. We're going to go do some good together. Yeah, I'm excited about it. So, guys, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, thanks for participating and joining us. Please share. Please like. Please comment. Uh, donate. And until, uh, until we're in D.C., uh, congratulations, Senator. Thank you. Let's go do some good. God bless. God bless America. Mm-hmm.